Hi, and welcome to lesson 15 on realistic single photons. In this lesson, we're going to talk about um, how we model real single photons coming from real photonic sources. In step one, we're going to begin with multimode description of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, we have said in the previous lessons that the model that we used to describe as single photons were just a toy model and not very realistic. We modeled it as the number state one, ket one, of a single mode. A single mode of radiation represents a plane harmonic wave. And we know that uh, such a wave cannot represent a wave packet. Harmonic waves do not have uh, a start and they do not have a finish or end. They extend over all space and over all time. However, wave packets of single photons, they must be produced by a source. So they have a definite start. And when we measure them, they have a definite end. In other words, somehow we want to go from description of simple single harmonic waves into description of wave packets. And we know from Fourier series how to do that. All we need is multiple modes uh, of different frequencies that we superpose together and the resulting wave will have the following shape, that of a wave packet. So the question now is, how do we do this using our quantum formalism that we have developed for single modes in the previous lessons? We know that a general classical electric field can be written as a superposition over all the different electric modes for each individual mode M. And this is the usual expression that we are used to, and every mode is characterized by its polarization given by epsilon m and its frequency omega m. Omega m is related to the k vector in the following way, where omega is equal to c, the speed of light, times the magnitude of the k vector m for that mode m. Now, we know how to quantize a single mode of radiation. The question now is, how do we quantize this entire uh, sum over all the modes? And the logic of the quantization process is the same. However, we're so that's why we're going to step towards the end and only mention the important results that come out along the way. One such important result is that the individual modes of electric field are decoupled they do not interact with each other. This is very important. We know that a single mode of electromagnetic radiation can be modeled as a simple harmonic oscillator. That means that since these modes do not interact, we can write down the multimode electric field as a collection of non-interacting simple harmonic oscillators. In other words, we can immediately write down the Hamiltonian for the total radiation field, denoted by HR, as the sum over individual Hamiltonians for individual modes M. To remind you what those are, it's the photon energy H bar omega M times the number operator for mode M given by A dagger M A M plus a factor of one half coming from the fact that the um, creation and annihilation operators do not commute. And these are the following these are the commutation relations satisfied for multimode case, where A and A dagger commute if they act on different modes. If they act on the same mode, they do not commute and their commutator is given by one. And A always commutes with A and A dagger always commutes with A dagger, regardless of in which mode we are. So these are very important relations and I urge you to commit them to your memory. The usual question that we ask immediately after writing down the Hamiltonian is what are its eigenstates and what are its eigenvalues? We denote the eigenvalues by E and the eigenstates by ket phi. Luckily, we know what are the eigenstates and eigenvalues of each individual mode. Therefore, we can immediately write down what are the energies and also the eigenstates for the multimode case. So the total Hamiltonian is the sum over individual mode Hamiltonians where I remind you that each individual uh, mode Hamiltonian has eigenstates n, m. These are our number states from previous lessons, but this time we have to include an index m to uh, keep track of which mode we are talking about. And the eigenvalues of this mode Hamiltonian are given by e, n, m, where again, m is in the index of the mode and n tells us in which energy level we are. And the uh, multimode 
number states can be written, this phi can be written in the following. It's just the tensor product of the individual number states for individual single modes. For example, in this notation, we've got n1 photons in mode 1, then we've got n2 photons in mode 2, and so on. This notation is a little bit too long, so normally we omit the tensor, uh, tensor product symbols and we simply write it as one ket, where uh, we put a comma in between this n1 and n2 and so on and so forth. So let's test it. Let's substitute our expression into the eigen, uh, eigen equation for the multimode case. We've got our total uh, Hamiltonian for the radiation field acting on our multimode number state. We can write the total Hamiltonian as the sum of individual Hamiltonians where all of these HMs act only on mode M. That pulls out the eigenvalue EM, so the total total energy of the multimode field in the multimode number state is given by the sum of the uh, energies of the each individual mode. The vacuum we also denote by simple ket0. However, now we are in the multimode case, so really when we write ket0, what we mean is that we've got zero photons in mode 1, zero photons in mode 2, and so on. And as we have seen in the previous lessons, we can use the vacuum to generate any number state. In particular, if you want to generate uh, the multimode number state n1, n2, up to nm, and so on, all we have to do is we have to apply the creation operator a, a dagger, on, uh, on mode 1. So a1 dagger. And we have to apply it n1 times. And in order to make sure that the whole state is properly normalized, we divide by the factor of square root of n1 factorial. And similarly for the other modes as well. How do you write the electric field operator for the multimode case? It's very simple. It's just the sum of the individual electric field operators for each mode, given as here. To remind you, i is just a complex number. Um, the vector epsilon m denotes the polarization vector for that mode. Eps, capital Epsilon M1 is the one photon amplitude for mode M, and then we've got our annihilation operator AM for the mode M, and creation operator A dagger M with their corresponding exponentials. Also a very useful, um, useful operator is the positive field component of the electric field, and that's just given as the sum of single mode positive field components. To remind you, this operator is not an observable because it is not Hermitian. Here we only have A, we do not have A dagger as well. But it's very useful when doing calculations, particularly when we are calculating photodetection signals. So how do we do it in the multimode case? It's the same logic as in the single mode case. We've got our detector placed at position R, and we've got some state of the radiation field, Psi T. This time it's a multimode state. And we are interested in calculating the probability of a single detection for a detector of surface area ds during the time interval dt at time t. And we have seen how to compute that. It's given by the following expression where we have to compute this function w1. And again, we do it in a very similar fashion, but there are a few key differences. In this case, the operator E plus, the positive field component, is a sum over all individual modes M. And also, as you can see, we're not multiplying the whole modulus square by the sensitivity S. And that's because the sensitivity S is dependent on the frequency of the mode. Previously, we only had a single uh, mode, therefore we only had a single sensitivity. This is not true in general for the multimode case. Therefore, we have to bring in the factor of s inside the modulus squared. Therefore, it becomes square root of s, which is a function of the frequency of the mode. And also, a very peculiar thing about the vacuum of a multimode field. We have seen in the previous lessons that the vacuum of a single mode is not empty, meaning it has a finite energy given by one half h bar omega. And we also said that this has very important consequences for many other areas of quantum optics. What's the case for the multimode vacuum? Well, let's compute the average energy of the vacuum by computing the following uh, expectation value of the Hamiltonian. We can easily do that because 
A dagger A acting on vacuum gives us the number zero. However, there is this factor of one half that remains. Therefore, the energy of the multimode vacuum field is given by the sum of one half h bar omega m over all the modes. So in principle, if you have infinitely many modes, the energy of the vacuum is also infinitely large. I have to, uh, I have to um, confess that I find this idea strange, even to this day. Although it has been solved by Tomonaga, Schwinger and Feynman, for which they received a Nobel Prize in 1962. However, I also only mention it as a curiosity that you should keep in your mind. We're not really going to delve uh, into the renormalization theory. So this concludes step one on how to describe multimode uh, uh, quantum uh, radiation fields. In the next step, we're going to look at single photon wave packets. See you there.